Here we have a buffer solution containing hydrocyanic acid and its conjugate base cyanide in the form of potassium cyanide. We are given the initial molarities of each compound. Then 0 0.0263 moles of a strong base, sodium hydroxide, is added. Calculate the new pH after the sodium hydroxide has been added. We need to know the volume of the buffer so we could convert the molarity into number of moles of each compound. The initial moles of HCN and KCN is calculated by multiplying the volume 0.15 liters times the molarity of each compound. You can see it here in the cell or up in this edit bar. Next we were told 0 0.0263 moles of sodium hydroxide were added. It's a one-to-one -one reaction between the HCN and the sodium hydroxide. So we will neutralize 0 0.0263 moles of HCN. Those 0 0.0263 moles of HCN will be converted to 0 0.0263 moles of cyanide. Therefore we're adding that same mole amount to the cyanide side. The final moles are simply the summation, or in this case the difference, for the HCN and then the summation of these two values for the cyanide. Because this is a buffer solution and these two compounds are on the same volume, we don't need to calculate the molarity of each compound because that volume will cancel out in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Here I calculated the new pH using a pKa of 9.4. Here is a similar problem, but now we are adding a strong acid to a buffer. The buffer we have here is acetic acid and acetate. Using the values given in the problem, I calculated the initial moles of each compound using 0.225 liters as the volume of the buffer. The change, because it's a one-to-one -one reaction between the hydroiodic acid and the potassium cyanide, we're going to lose 0 0.0477 moles of cyanide and gain that same number of moles of the weak acid. These are the final mole values for each compound. And using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and a pKa of 4.74, pH is 4.286. Reflecting on both of these problems, this one and the one where the sodium hydroxide was added, it makes sense that the pH in this case has decreased from the pKa. The pKa is 4.74. Because we're adding acid, we're going to decrease the pH of the buffer. In the previous problem, we added a strong base. The pKa was 9.4 makes sense that the pH increased. Here we're asked to make some predictions when we add sodium hydroxide to this buffer solution. I included the numbers in the spreadsheet so we could examine them more closely. The initial moles of weak acid, the initial moles of conjugate base. We are told the acid and the base are in a one liter solution. So the molarities are the number of moles of each component. The change is pretty drastic because we're adding 0.476 moles of sodium hydroxide which will react in a one-to-one -one ratio with hypochlorous acid. So the difference is negative 0.043. Hmm. Well, we have an excess of hydroxide. The negative 0.043 is actually the amount of hydroxide that remains because all of the acid was consumed. Regarding pH, we have a strong base solution. The pH is going to be extraordinarily high because the solution is essentially a 0 0.043 molar sodium hydroxide solution. The contribution of the conjugate base is negligible. Therefore, our predictions are as follows. It will raise the pH by several units and we have exceeded the buffer capacity. Here is a similar problem. Now we're adding barium hydroxide. Remember, for every one barium hydroxide unit, there are two hydroxides. The initial moles of acid is 0.338, moles of base 0.451. The change is 0.17, not 0.085. Because remember, for every one 
barium hydroxide unit, there are two hydroxides, so we need to take that into account by multiplying the 0 0.085 by 2. And that leaves us with 0.168 moles of weak acid and 0.621 moles of conjugate base. So we did not exceed the buffer capacity, but the pH will increase slightly. Here we're asked to carry out another set of predictions. We have an ammonia-ammonium bromide buffer, 0.38.29, and we are adding 0.15 moles of hydrochloric acid. Because we're adding a strong acid, the pH will decrease. So this right here is false, because we know the pH is going to go down. Now if we're adding acid, we're going to increase the amount of conjugate acid here, because if we start off with this is the base, this is our conjugate acid. So we're going to increase that number. So this ratio will in fact go down, the ratio of um, base to acid, because we're going to neutralize the ammonia, the ammonia is the base. The concentration of hydronium will increase. That's another false statement because we're adding acid. It will not decrease. The number of moles of ammonium will decrease. That is also false. Uh, this is true. The, ammon the number of moles of ammonia will decrease because we are neutralizing the ammonia with the acid. In this case, we're adding neither an acid or a base. We are simply adding water to the buffer. The concentration of acid will remain the same. Well, no, we're diluting the solution, so it will decrease, so that's false. The concentration of base will increase. No, they're both going to decrease because of the dilution. The equilibrium concentration of H3O will decrease. Volume has no effect on the pH because we are effectively diluting both acid and base. So this is false. pH will remain the same, so this is also false. And this is true, the ratio of acid and conjugate base will remain the same. And for this reason, because this ratio remains the same, the pH will not change, therefore there will be no change in hydronium.